Without getting too into the weeds, cryptocurrencies need a limited resource to secure their networks. In the case of Bitcoin, that limited resource is electricity, used in the oft-discussed mining process. The cryptocurrencies that use this process are called proof-of-work. There's another limited resource that can also be used, and that's the cryptocurrency itself. The platforms that use this method are called proof-of-stake. The only point I want to make about proof-of-stake tokens, for the sake of this video, is that these tokens, when staked, to support the network will result in fees being paid to the holder of those tokens. While not exactly the same, this is similar to being paid interest for money held in a bank account, a dividend to a stockholder, or yield on a bond. The crypto world might be underestimating how proof-of-stake returns will affect the upcoming bull market. I discussed this in a video outlining the bull case for the soon-to-be-released Hedera HBAR, but I have just begun to understand how important this kind of return on crypto will be. I've done a fair amount of research into the effect a little interest has on investors, from the history of the Goldsmith Bankers to the De Medici family for my 2014 video series. I was shocked at how a small return on banking deposits enticed people to put their money into banks after this had resulted in total losses for depositors over and over throughout history. It seems obvious that the possibility of returns above capital appreciation is a huge motivator for investors. This is exemplified today by many ultra-high duration bonds being offered by governments, some up to 100 years. Countries offering 100-year bonds include Argentina, Austria, Ireland, and Mexico. Even companies are getting into the mix, with Petrobras, Brazil's state oil company, offering a 100-year bond at an 8.45% yield. To use Argentina as an example of the lunacy of what a little interest will do to investors, Argentina has defaulted on its debt eight times in its history, with the latest occurring as recently as 2014 to 2016. Still, the world was willing to lend them $2.75 billion at 7.125% for 100 years. Now, considering Argentina has suffered over a half dozen high or hyperinflation events over the past 75 years, it isn't surprising that investors weren't willing to take on the additional currency risk. So the 100-year Argentinian bonds were denominated in U.S. dollars. But even this, one of the world's most stable currencies, has lost 98% of its value over the past 100 years. And I can't imagine the dollar faring any better over the next 100 years. Not to mention, denominating the Argentinian bonds in dollars only increases the likelihood of default. Now imagine how investors will react to an asset that provides a yield but the underlying currency also has the potential to rise significantly in value instead of drop, like all fiat currencies inevitably do. In general, crypto winter has caused most investors to stop thinking about the crypto space. But I believe this proposition, once investors wrap their heads around it, will significantly contribute to the next bull run in cryptocurrency. This could take the market cap of the still young asset class to the lofty heights many headlines have touted. One of the major critiques of Bitcoin held by Warren Buffett is that Bitcoin doesn't offer a dividend like company stock. But with proof of stake, cryptos now offer a form of yield and actually offer a huge benefit over equities. Normally, if an equity is considered a growth instead of a value stock, they will not pay a dividend. Amazon, Netflix, and Tesla do not pay a dividend. With crypto, on the other hand, you get the potential of tremendous growth of the underlying asset in addition to the proof-of-stake returns. We just had a story this past week put out by CNBC, quoting a wealth manager and certified financial planner, Peter Malik. He said, if you buy cryptocurrency, you get no income. It's not a real investment. It's speculation. Instead, invest in things that are going to pay as you own them. Own real estate, where you can collect rent. Own stocks where you're collecting dividends. Own bonds where you're collecting yield. Of course, this shows his ignorance in the one place he should be an expert, the cutting edge of investing. But that's where opportunity lies, having knowledge about assets the so-called experts are still clueless about. The driver behind the bull market of 2013 was innovators getting excited. The 2017 bull market was the result of early retail adopters seeing the potential of crypto. The bull market in the years to come will be driven by the early majority in retail, but also by the so far elusive institutional investors. The return on crypto, on top of capital appreciation, will not be overlooked by hedge funds, pension funds, and family offices. 
Coinbase has recognized this and has recently started to share the stake rewards for Tezos and Maker for institutional custody clients. Coinbase will also offer institutional custody for Cardano, EOS, Dash, and my favorite, Hedera Hashcraft's HBAR that should hit markets this summer, and other proof-of-stake tokens. A similar stake reward sharing service will likely be offered for these tokens as well. Proof-of-stake has several advantages over proof-of-work, but the psychological effect on investors can't be overstated. Of course, there will be proof-of-work protocols that will benefit from the upcoming bull market, but I believe the top tokens that offer an additional return have the potential to outperform. Coinbase has taken the opportunity of Crypto Winter to build the necessary infrastructure and services to allow clients to take advantage of this income stream. It has been difficult for some retail investors to take advantage of proof-of-stake returns, but service providers like Coinbase will continue to make it easier and easier for investors to take advantage of this opportunity. There are far too many examples of proof-of-stake cryptocurrencies to cover here. Be sure to do your own research on the nuances of each you are considering for investment. I wouldn't necessarily chase the tokens that have the highest proof-of-stake rewards. The largest return on investment will still be the appreciation of the token itself. So if you decide to invest in a proof-of-stake token, focus on the platform you think will be most successful. For most platforms, the proof-of-stake rewards may change through governance based on what is best for the network or may change due to the success of the network. These mechanisms should be understood before investing. When discussing investments that provide a form of yield, it should also be considered that we are now in the longest economic expansion in U.S. history. There are some pretty smart people saying that a recession is likely to happen within the next few years. If we do enter a recession, interest rates on bonds will fall, making other assets that offer an income stream look more attractive. The historically low interest rates of the past decade are a big reason for the bull market in stocks. This could be yet another driver towards proof-of-stake tokens. If you're wary of investing in these admittedly volatile assets, watch our video explaining our DIP, or Dynamic Investment Program. It's simple to understand, easy to use, and can be tested to determine if the system is right for you.